Hello everyone, this is my first time ever going live on YouTube, so everything is not up to uh, recording standards. Um, yeah, I mean, we're almost close to that 5k mark, guys, as uh, most of you know. This is more of a hobby for me, I don't get paid to do this. Um, and this is the first time we're going live, I figured why not pull the trigger before we hit that 5k mark at least and you know this is the first time we're doing this and most of you are seeing me without a script so if you go over to Twitter which I'm at at the moment I will respond back to your comments and whatever you need and uh, we'll have a small chit chat keep it under let's say what five minutes um, send me your comments and um, we'll work together. So, I am from America, but at the moment I'm in England. And yeah, so ask me whatever you want. We'll talk about Somalia. We'll have a grand chit chat, Allah Sahib. So, let's hop on to the first topic right now. The first topic at the moment is the elections in Somalia. Thank you. Welcome to the UK, bro. I appreciate that. So, most of you can. Uh, write something, I'll try to read it as fast as I could, and um, we'll move on from there. Let's have a conversation. Well, at the moment, I'm in Birmingham, but I'm going down to London as well. I think not tomorrow, but the weekend, inshallah. <laughs> Probably a wife. I don't know what that means. <laughs> as I said, we were going to read this out, out loud, hopefully. You guys don't write any inappropriate things. But let's move on to the topic that I wanted to get to, and that's uh, what the United States Embassy in Mogadishu wrote. And that is, they want the Villa Somalia to hold a meeting, to convey a meeting or convince a meeting in uh, and around with the FGM. Um, I don't know, Wallahi. I don't know if I'm just going to... Uh, I think I personally believe he's going to hold the selection. It's not an election, but I feel like he is going to hold it. You think Formaja will win? Um, I don't. I don't think he's going to win. Um, will win. I don't. Well, that's your view. I don't, I don't believe that he is going to win. But the embassy in Mogadishu did ask for a meeting with uh, federal member states and federal uh, central government and opposition parties to all come together. But guys, I already commented on this on Twitter. I believe it's a waste of time. No, I, I think it's, it's a waste of time, the meetings that's gonna be held. What, what's the point of the meeting? There's no point of hel holding a meeting. We have tribal men in Somalia. We, they, they're everywhere. They're in uh, Garowe, they're in Mogadishu, Hargeisha, they're everywhere. So these people don't want to let go of power. And then you have the speaker or the upper house leader in Somalia, militia, saying, we need to talk about you know, the differences that we're having. We need to have a conversation around that. I don't believe that's the case. I believe that's a complete and waste of everyone's time. So do I believe Farmaj is going to hold the election on time? Yes. I, at the moment, I believe the president will hold elections at the time it is required. And if he does extend it, I will obviously criticize, but I believe Farmaja is going to stick to the point, and I believe Farmaja is going to hold the election accountable. Now, question is, is he going to steal the election? Is he going to move some, make some moves? Is he going to pay people off? Salam alaikum, brother. Is he going to make some moves? Probably, yes, I think so. He's going to do it. But do I believe he's going to stick to the time frame? You want a socialist Democrat, um, a socialist dictator, dictatorship. No, we don't need a socialist dictatorship. I don't believe in socialist dictatorship. No, I don't believe, no. X-Man, I don't believe someone from Aja is at the right path. I believe he's in a wrong path. I believe him and Hassan Sheikh were all, they're all on the same path. These guys are not helping Somalia. We need someone new. 
We need someone honest to change the country. For Majah, Hassan Sheikh, Sharif, they're old news. I don't want them. I really don't understand people who support Hassan Sheikh, and I don't understand people who support Fumadja. For me, I'm over here. I believe we need someone new. I believe we need someone to finish the constitution. Somalia needs a constitution. What we have right now are losers. Let's just be honest. Fumadja failed. Hassan Sheikh failed. Sharif, you know, he, he has an excuse. But the Hassan Sheikh, Fumadja, they all failed. We need someone new. We need someone courage courageous enough to finish the constitution, we need someone to tell these regional states that they need to break down Mahalija, the rule of law. A constitution will do that in Somalia. I got to say, I, I believe democracy could flourish in Somalia, yes, because Mahalija, when you have people with so many different views in Somalia, I feel like democracy is the only way because Let's say we have a dictatorship. Okay, who's going to dictate Somalia? One guy, one group. Okay, where are they from? So, you're going to piss off the rest of Somalia. Excuse my language. But you're going to make other people angry. You don't think that's going to happen? Uh, I do believe if Somaliland is given the space to hold a referendum, an honest referendum, and then I believe Somalia should accept Somaliland's Mahalija referendum, and the result, and I believe Somaliland could choose their own path. I believe in that too. I don't believe in this mentality that we have to hold everyone together. If Somaliland, and only Somaliland, feels like they want to leave, I welcome that. I do a lot. They deserve the best. But I will not accept Somaliland's 1992-1993 referendum. Uh, we need one country, uh, one problem, not two. No, no, uh, I don't, we, we don't need one country. We need one peaceful region. I gotta tell you. Maybe, I, I, I think so. I feel like that might be it. I hate to admit, but it's sad to see Somaliland growing ahead of Somalia. I mean, no, it's not sad to admit, it's true. Somaliland, you have to give them halajiri their dues. If they grow, alhamdulillah, Somaliland succeeded, and that's what you want. The idea is, you know, even in our religion, um, you have to be happy for your brother. You can't just say, mm, why are they succeeding without us? No, no, alhamdulillah, you're succeeding. You know, good. Uh, yes, death to 4.5. I agree with that. So I, hate, I hate 4.5. Kabil mentality hasn't moved anybody um, anywhere. And do I believe the current structure of Somalia is flawed? Yes. The federalism we have right now, well, qashin, it's, it's, it's trash. Somalia deserves a better federalism because what we have right now is small issues of Somalia. If you look at Puntland, for example, they're the most um, well-lasting, long-lasting state. Look at it. It's built like Somalia, Puntland. They have same Qabil issues, same problem, and, and, and stagnation when it comes to Mahajiri, necessary growth. Now, I was looking at stats in, uh, in small towns in America. Small towns in America has a larger government budget than the whole of Somalia. Can you believe that? Yeah, a small town. Let's just say, for example, well, Boston is a big city. That's where I'm from. So Boston has about, about $12 billion that they work with a year. Somalia, government budget-wise. So, when you ask, do I believe, uh, what do you mean? In, in, in regards to what? Farah, what, what are you talking about? Uh, one Somalia with a strong army is what the country needs. Do you, so you believe one Somalia with a strong army is what Somalia needs? Um, see, we had one Somalia, and we had a strong army. What, what happened? A strong army that, that adheres to the needs of the public is a good thing. Uh, Birmingham is a great place, I, I like it. It's uh, obviously England is uh, gray and it's raining today, so uh, what can you do? Uh, that, was, that was a communist regime. So what kind of, what kind of strong army Somali government do you need? No, no, I, I disagree, Sahib. I truly disagree. 
Um, I don't, I believe any strong arm in your law, sorry about the Boston budget being 12 billion, it's 3.5 billion. I had to fact check myself because I was like, that's a lot of money for Boston. $3.5 billion is their annual budget. So, uh, yeah, I mean, um, look, if you look at, for example, uh, North Korea right now, or if you look at, uh, Saudi, uh, not Saudi Arabia, um, uh, uh, Iraq or uh, Libya or, or Syria, to, it, it, you can drag a dictatorship so long, it doesn't matter how long, but yeah, I mean, Somalia would have been amazing if there was, if Siad Bar was still president, because he'll still do what he does best, build things by brute force, abuse people. But guess what, Sahib Yal? In the end of the day, if you look at Libya, if you look at Syria, if you look at Hajri, uh, Egypt, it will crash. It doesn't matter if you hold, Alhamdulillah, whatever, I mean, I don't, I'm not happy that we had the war, but if we had a problem, I'm happy that it's been way back then, 1991, that it happened, that we don't have civil war now. Imagine having civil war now. That would have been a problem, you know? So now we've seen what happened, we've seen the errors of our Hajri past, and we can fix it. But if, if we're saying, hmm, I hope we have, you know, uh, imagine Somalia now, if we had the government back then and we didn't have no war. In the end of the day, you would have a collapse of something. And I'm, I'm kind of am glad it happened 20, 30 years ago. But now we are stuck to a lot of problems. If you had to choose one, <laughs> if I had to choose one right now, it'll definitely be Hargeisa um, because it's peaceful, um, it's beautiful. Um, I have friends who are from Hargeisa who do travel uh, there every day. And I do have friends who are from Mogadishu and they travel there too. Um, my parents were born in Mogadishu. So, I mean, no H-Town is where it's at, bro. I mean, I don't disagree. So, but I hope that Mahalidri, the issues and problems that Mogadishu is dealing with, and most of you have to understand too, the problems that Mogadishu deal with, is dealing with is because it was the hub of everything. We gotta say, the hub of everything. So the hub of development, the hub of Mahajir wealth, that was where everything was in Mahalaji Somalia. It was Mogadishu. So when the country collapsed, I'm not surprised that everything, every issue collapsed with Mogadishu. And the issue still dragged Hargeisa in Somalia city, so it's jigga. I don't know what that means, Sahib, but hopefully. Um, problem keeps coming. Um, can you say it again, please? Uh, who are you? Um, it's gotta be Boston. Boston. Jigjiga, Ugadenia, Walala. Is that where you're from? Jigjiga? Now, you guys gotta, you know, uh, either like the video or push the video. I mean, I'm really loving the comments. I'm leaving, uh, I mean, I definitely support, uh, love the support that I'm getting from you guys. I'm from uh, Hamar. No, I live in London. You live in London? Okay, nice. Nice. Hopefully, when I get to ten thousand, I'm trying to gonna have a we're gonna have a huge party, and I don't know if it's London. So most of you guys, I'm a Somali nationalist. You're a Somali nationalist. Okay, let's talk about nationalism. In a nationalistic form, do you mean you're a Somali nationalist because you support Somalia, uh, you support Somalia as a as a great nation, and the people should be amazed at what Somalia has achieved? And, and, and hold the culture, hold the achievements? Or are you nationalist because, how can I say, like, I don't care what happens. I really, really want Somalia. I don't care if we do it by brute force. I don't care if we hold people, abuse people. Because I don't understand, because, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but, you know, you guys let me know, because the only way um, I can understand Hawaii is that if you're saying you're a nationalist, a nationalist in the, in the form that you support Mahalajiri dictatorship or you support the Somali identity? Because if you support the Somali identity, then Djibouti is also Somali. We gotta say, brute, okay, force. No. So brute force is how we got here. We don't want brute force. Folks, I'm, the reason why I'm making these videos and the reason why I'm doing all this, if you're watching this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up.
like it. I'm only seeing two of you guys, and a lot of people is coming in and going out. Just hit the button and let's move on with our lives. Uh, I don't support dictator. I support Somali people, bro. I do support Somali people. I got it too. I do support them, and, and, and that's amazing. Thank God you're not a crazy nationalist. Um, what's your view on uh, secularism? So, my view on secularism is um, the same view that uh, Balki, uh, Turkey has. Um, look, you, you can have a majority country full of, you know, one religion. Majority. In Somali or Hawaii, it's Sunni Muslims, okay? But we shouldn't abuse other people's rights. And if we've learned anything, Somalis living here in the United States, I mean, uh, here right now in England, but I live in the United States, and everywhere around the world that Somalis move to, go look at it. No one is abusing you. No one's telling you how to. You have the freedom of religion. So, and that's one thing if we've learned anything, the diaspora, is that we need to learn that if there are people in Somalia with different religion than you know, Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, Sunni Muslim, then that's perfectly fine. We shouldn't abuse people. We got to. And I feel like that conversation, a lengthy conversation about religion, should be had. And I will tell you how I feel. But I feel like you know, um, secularism. If I push secularism Somalia today right now, I'm a dead man. <laughs> we got it. So um, I'm gonna give cost to psychos, but. I feel like freedom of religion should be respected in Somalia. And I feel like in the end of the day, there should be a referendum and a dem democratic choice. Oh my God, thank you, bro. Democratic choice. Somalis in Somalia should vote to have their rights. So if they're Somalis, uh, the, the Somali citizens only in Somalia, if they vote to have secularism, then Alhamdulillah, that's their choice. But what I will support and I will make it super clear is in the Somali constitution, there should be religion, a freedom of religion. That should be paramount in Somalia. That their people shouldn't be abused to be a Muslim, to follow. Because there was a report a couple of years ago, folks, that came out that the, the, the Somali religious minister was against uh, the Amazon troops. That's the African Union mission in Somalia. They shouldn't celebrate uh, Christmas when they're in Somalia. What? Why not? Who cares? Who cares? One, they're here to support you. Side note, side note, I hate the African Union mission in Somalia. Let's, let me make that super clear, and most of you know that. Um, the, uh, the, okay. So, uh, come on guys, you know, you guys send the message out, make sure there's 13 of you guys right now, and about, I think most of you hop in, hop off like that. Yes, no Amazon, I hate Amazon. Why not, why? I don't think they do anything for Somalia. But if they're there and your president and your government is signing off, then you should, you should let them live their life. Is that too hard to, like, is that, is that like a crazy request? Maybe, maybe. But Somalis need to move on from this primitive standards that we are. And I believe the people in Somalia, I don't... You know, I love my Hajri uh, uh, Somalis in America and, you know, di diaspora. But in the end of the day, it is the people who live in Somalia who should have these choices. The only thing we can do as the diaspora is advise, you know, talk about things and let them know what's what. We did not, we are, not, as the diaspora, we're not supposed to go to Somalia, take over their jobs, take the money that comes in, and then go back to Europe and America. That's not what we're supposed to do as a diaspora. And I feel like the diaspora overall mission has definitely failed Somalia because I'm seeing flooding. I'm seeing food insecurity. I'm seeing diseases. So many problems. No, they're not, the diaspora, they're, they're not educated. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to insult people because I've, I've been told to you know, tone down the rhetoric here. I'm not trying to make fun of, I guess, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uneducated cab drivers or whatever. It's not, it's not why it's not, I'm not even trying to be, uh, I'm not trying to insult people, but we don't need uneducated Europeans, Somalis and American Somalis in diaspora going back to Somalia and acting like the only thing I got, the only thing I got, and I think um, mine's over here, one sec. Let me, I'm gonna bring it out. So this is the only thing that I got, I got folks. This is the only thing, the, the diaspora I got, this is it. 
That's it. This is what they have. Oh, uh, uh, I, I can be a president of Somalia. I can be a prime minister. This is, this is my, my universal credit right here. This is, this is what I got. Uh, I should be a leader of Somalia. Any person can get this. This is not, this is not important. So going back to Africa, going back to Somalia, showing this doesn't make you a leader at all. You need a college degree. You need, well, not just a college degree, but college degree in the area that you think you're good at. That's it. The only one. Yeah, I agree. I definitely 100% agree. I feel like we do, Sahib. I feel like we do need an association. I feel like we need, uh, I know there's uh, Snappy, there's Somali professionals who are, um, I don't know if they're in Europe, but they are in America. I've have been to their, um, I think their first ever meeting in Minneapolis uh, about professionalism. Uh, you have accountants, doctors, you have executives who are Somalis. You have, you have nurses, you got professional Somalis. But you know what? The issue how we can't, you know, the issue of Hawaii is that the, the, uh, it's mainly Odial, okay, in Hawara, and Lagarni, that they came out then. They run to Somalia, they screw up the name of the diaspora, right? And then they, they, they push their own view. I don't know, I don't believe anyone in Somalia can ever try. If I come to Somalia, if I come to Mogadishu, all right, tomorrow, let's say that, and I want to run for Somalia, let's say I want to be the president. And I want to, you know, hey, look, I, you know, I have an accounting degree. I'm an accountant, um, but I also, uh, you know, I've learned. I have definitely have classes. Yes, one nation, one people under God. No one has issues with that. Yes, but have you seen your one nation, one country under God, and how it's acting? They don't act like one nation, one God. No. If we all acted like a true Muslim in Somalia, I wouldn't be seeing uh, 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 a child rapist and then old disgusting men running to support the rapists because we have to support the guy. That's not a religion, Sahib. That's Qashin. You need to start waking up. People are here defending rapists instead of if you follow the religion, then that rapist deserves to get killed, get arrested, whatever. Not to be defended. Fuck it, Sahib. I'm sick and tired of people. Just, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, you know, the issue we have here in America is that, you know, you have Black Lives Matters, and then you have people running to you saying, all life matters. Okay, well, if all life matters, then we wouldn't be having this notion of Black Lives Matters. Correct? Let's move on. Because I hate people who run around pushing religion, and then... They obviously don't see the injustice that's happening within the country. I don't believe, yeah, I, don't, I really don't think they're unified because they're all sick in the head at the end of the day. They are. Kawil, I feel like we need a massive, massive, massive mental health um, institution in Somalia. The biggest government facility should be mental health in Somalia. Inshallah, Sahib. Inshallah. Okay, we follow. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, again, this is not to disrespect uh, religion. This is not to disrespect uh, anyone. It's just, it's, it's sad and it's pretty pathetic seeing people going around pushing religion. And then when you look back, you see rapists, murderers, killers running loose. And then you think, no, 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 no. You have, you know, all the ash, you know, these, these old religious, you know, moral men will come and talk about, you know, Somalia. Nope, they run to you like, think who, yeah, who, yeah, who's the, who is he? What tribe is he? Oh, he's, you know, tribe B. Hmm, tribe B, yeah. Okay, and then, then, Alhamdulillah, let's just forget about it. You know, I you know, a couple of them got their camels and we're done with it. So, what are you saying? We're supporting the man. We love this tribal man, you know what I mean? Yeah, he could be a rapist, but you know, he's, our, he's from our tribe. He's sick, man. Yes.
one culture, two religions, Huawei, the true religion, and the unknown psychotic Mahalajri manifesto religion in Hawaii. But let's get back to the productive conversation. I hate when I get sidelined by negative Mahalajri comments. So, at the end of the day, we need to change the diaspora. We need to have, like you said, my friend, we need to have a SYL uh, version, uh, and, and we need to move forward. Mental health. <laughs> we don't need dictatorship. Yes, I believe mental help in Somalia will definitely, uh, thoughts on, by the way, mental help will definitely work in Somalia. If we stay calm and collected, we will, inshallah. I feel like the bulk of the citizens, shabka, in Somalia are very, very, very smart people and very, very um, understanding folks. But the problem with Hawaii is the old, old folksies, okay? So, my thoughts on Madhuwe. Well, it's simple. The thoughts about Madhuwe is that he needs to go. Madhuwe needs to go, but the only reason I would, I don't support him and I don't, I don't condemn him, and that's because of Fermanje. So someone like me, I look at the bigger picture. What made Madhuwe there? Why is he there and why someone like me I'm not up in arms and saying, Mother, we need to go. Ah, because look at the reaction coming from Hajj Vida Somalia. If Vida Somalia was honest with itself, if Vida Somalia was true to, its, to, to the book, then I would say, Mother, needs to go today. He needs to get the hell out. He's done. Wakashi. But Vida Somalia goes to Bay Double, kills Somali citizens, chooses their leadership, and then comes back to me and says, Iman, you have to support Madhuwe. You have to get rid of Madhuwe and support us. Why? Why would I support you? That's my stance on Madhuwe. Madhuwe isn't the guy for me. You'll never... Um, the only time I feel like we will compete with Kenya is if we finish the constitution, we have honest leaderships, not the ones we have, not Farmaja, not Hashim, none of these guys. That's when we can compete with uh, Kenya. Yes, yes, but Mahalajri natural resources could be under our control if we have a constitution that separates Mahalajri all the necessary power, resource sharing, and Mahalajri accountability when it comes to uh, accounting, when it comes to Mahalajri resources. We can't have the situation that's happening in Nigeria where the country is, has a ton of oil, but the people are, the Mahalajri are broke. We need to be like, like UAE, the people need to be wealthy, the country needs to be amazing. We can't have Nigeria where a few corrupt some have all the money, but the country and the people are disgusting. We don't want that. Sorry, go look at that up. Can you address these uh, separatist in which way? So someone asked, what do I think about Musa Bihi? Um, to be honest with you, Musa Bihi is, uh, You know, I personally have nothing against Musubi. I, I don't think I even had the only negative issue I have with Musubi is, is the, the arrest and then the release and then the arrest and then the release of, um, of the journalist. That's it. That's the only negative I have about Musubi. Um, overall, do I think he's a, 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 a right fit for the, the position he's in in uh, Somalia, Somaliland? Yeah. I think he's perfectly fine. I think he's been doing exactly what the rest uh, in, in Somalia are doing. But over, yeah, I know the monarchy, I understand. America is not a monarchy and we have resource sharing. You know, I'm just giving you an example. I'm saying we need to be developed. I'm not talking about monarchy and government. We need DP world thoughts. So the UAE, <laughs> I gotta be, I gotta like censor myself because I'm going to Dubai. Um, I'm kidding, I don't censor my ship, I don't care what happens. Um, they're definitely playing geopolitics, obviously, and they're definitely looking out for the interest of UNO, and that's the UAE. So that's my thought on the UAE. Do I think they deserve to be in, let's say, Berbera or, or Bosaso? Um, that depends on, do I believe there's, um, uh, Turkey should be in uh, the port of Mogadishu? So who is the operator of, or, or the person in control of all this? Who knows? I feel like every region chooses 
uh, their leadership and their uh, deals. Do I believe it violates the Somali provincial constitution? No, because we need a completed constitution that would end the rubbish. If Somalia has a completed constitution, let me repeat this. If Somalia has a completed constitution, and then we wouldn't have this khali ibuq in Somalia. We would follow the rule. When it comes to international deals, it'll go straight to the Ministry of Finance. But now we have provincial constitutions. That means nothing. So that means Somalia is still a transitional federal government. We have Puntlan saying we have the Puntlan constitution, which is superior to Somalia's constitution. Okay, I don't know how that works, but yet you're still a member of the uh, Somali government. Well, wahwalan. So when we have a complete constitution, inshallah, then we can put these, everyone can, put, can be put at their place. That's it. That's all I ask for. Please finish the constitution there. Just talk in that to be We can move on with our life. But we have people running around pushing nonsensical Mahalajir rules. Today I am signing a law that ends whatever. Okay, how did that become constitutional? Is that even constitutional? Is there a Supreme Court? No. What law or what constitution are you using to make your rights or your laws legal? I don't know. It's, it's, it's a kangaroo court. It's anarchy. That's the problem with Somalia. And every government that comes in and fails to complete the constitution, to me, is a failed government. And if you think, no, Iman, you know, um, everyone, make sure you're liking this video. Make sure you're liking this video. Um, one sec before this thing dies on me. It's the first time I went live, so it's eating my battery. One sec. Okay, folks, we are back. So every time, you know, we are told we support this government and, you know, and what they stand for, I completely, I completely disagree. When we finish the Constitution, folks, inshallah, when we have a completed Constitution, come back to me and see what I do. Because if someone comes in to me and says, Iman, Ahmed Madhubi or Ahmed Adde, whatever comes in, Somalia, and he's violating this, this, and that, and he's doing this, this is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna to respond to your comments one sec. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look at the Constitution of Somalia because that's what an educated, simple, but yet the clear paper would have, right? Constitution. You look at it, okay. Okay, Ahmed Mudawe or Ahmed Adde is violating the Constitution of Somalia so he is wrong. But the Dastur La'an, we don't have a Dastur, we don't have a constitution, and we're expected to what, choose a side on who's right and who's wrong? Come on. If Somali wants to succeed, it needs to follow basic rules and laws. Okay, thoughts on uh, ONL, uh, ONLF. I feel like they have failed. I'm sorry to say that. Uh, I did definitely support it, or about the, the, the organization. But from the looks of it right now, they failed because they went for Mr. Abe Ahmed, who could care less about Somalis. That's a generation of uneducated people. What makes you think of? In, in what in what regard? I am on holiday at the moment. Um, uh, I'm on holiday. Inshallah, I'll be going back. Hopefully, I don't catch Corona. Okay, to the constitu uh, Constitution. Um, I understand what Hadith I definitely understand, but look at Somalis. I'm, giving, I'm going to give you an example in Somalis here in Europe and America. They, you know, they came from Somalia, from a war-torn country, and they came to the United States, they came to America. And guess what? They follow the speed limit, they follow the rules, they pay their bills, and they're scared of the law because the law doesn't see They don't there's no kawil because the the cops won't give you a ticket. If you don't pay your bills, We all are scared. We gotta know. Because if you don't follow the rules, you're gonna be under the law. And what happens? They're gonna throw the book at you, 
and they're going to follow basic articles on the uh, the rules and you're going to you're going to get hit so somalis that's somali club inshallah and we have a supreme court we have we got say county courts uh, uh, and uh, appeal courts we have jails we have independent legal system guess what somalis will definitely follow the rules that's it that's my belief somalis uh Marco. <laughs> I love this guy. No, Somalia does not need uh, gun rights. I feel like Somalia should have a complete ban on guns. Zero guns. Um, in what regards to Somalia? What do you mean? I... Yeah, well you obviously you need law enforcement if you're gonna need laws. Well, you're right, my friend. Gun rights, um, gun rights. Well, uh, you mean in gun rights in terms of no guns in Somalia? Because uh, if you're saying gun rights like America, Second Amendment, then hell no. We don't need Somalia. Does not need Second Amendment, Sahib. We're done with that nonsense. No, I disagree. Okay, so Somalia does not need gun rights. We, we need abolishments. We don't need guns at all. No, what, what is this? We need to be ready for a war with Ethiopia. No. Look, if you have... If you... Somalia needs a uh, mandatory um, conscription for the troops, right? So every 18-year-old for two years, four years, he or she will go to the uh, military, train, and Halijiri serve their country those two to four year term, like Singapore, Israel, everywhere, everywhere else in the world. And then if the boogeyman Ethiopia ever tries to invade Somalia, the people are well trained and they are reserved and they can defend their country. Okay? Just like, you know, Switzerland, you don't need to have every Hawa and Haji and Umar with AK-47. Because guess what, folks? They're going to start killing people. Um, hell no to what? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm confused. Is it, uh, Ethiopia tried it in 2006, bro. I mean, I, I, I understand how did Ethiopia um, in 2006. I mean, the 2006 issue is, is a, uh, a, a major failure of the Abdullah Yusuf administration. Major failure. He should never, ever have welcomed the uh, Ethiopians. Unfair Western economy. Well, that can only change if we work together. I'm going to, the Western countries won't lose you if you are not looking the other way. Because if I'm looking at right now in Twitter, you have all these Western countries talking about Somalia. Oh, Somalia should do this and Somalia do that. But I guarantee you, if any country talks about America's internal political issues, Let's say Russia, China talks about George, uh, about Trump and Mahalaj Biden. You can't get involved in our internal politics. What I am, I think they will. They're gonna start writing Mahalaj sanctions. How dare you? Uh, America does not like people talking about its internal political affairs. So why is America talking about other people's internal political affairs? Because you, Somalia, and any other country chose to open your door to them. So they they do whatever they want. No, the UK does it too, Saeed. The UK does it too. Okay. So, in the end of the day, I feel like um, as Somalis, we definitely can follow rules. If there's rules, are there. So you expect a country with no rules, no laws, to follow rules and laws. And then we're like, oh, Somali, they cannot follow rules and laws. Okay. I, I definitely do believe in my people. <sighs> yes, it's about resources. But in, in regards to resources, you know, Somalia became a country in 1960s. And we made something, you know, happen for at least eight years in a democratic country. And then under the dictatorship, he took that Mahalajri, um that, 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 that need for Somalis to start building things and, 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 and increasing our stuff. 
people fight over resources. Are you still talking about Ethiopia? I'm, I'm confused. Uh, if you are, please let me know. Are you talking about resources in regards to Ethiopia? War is not pretty for some pretty resources. Yeah. Petty reasons. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, do I believe Somalia has, Somalia is sitting on a ton of uranium. Not Ethiopia. So look, I understand the need for resources and not just Ethiopia. We, Somalia is quite satisfied with resources. We have uranium deposits in the south of Somalia. It's a lush agricultural uh, landscape. We have two rivers. Massive ocean. When it comes to resources, Somalia is blessed with resources. Somalia is not blessed with capital resources, meaning the people's knowledge of things. No, this is not there. It's not there at all. Every single year we have a professor, we have a general engineer coming to Somalia thinking he's going to be the Mahawina of Somalia. And guess what? Nothing. And if we look at one person right now, it is... Uh, Abdul Gaz, for example. Abdul Gaz was a professor from New York, and he apparently, you know, uh, went, uh, became president of Puntland. Guess what? He didn't do, and he was an economist. He didn't do anything for Puntland when it comes to Ibaraki, the economy of Puntland. What did he do? For, just for Puntland, a professor. Nothing. I mean, yeah, there's achievements when it comes to, like, Ibaraki, the airports in Bosaso and the airports in Gurawe. But overall, is Puntland an amazing place when it comes to the economy? No. Okay, well, uh, when... <laughs> Example. Exactly. Once we work together, we can definitely deal with external issues. We need a clear immigration law. Yes, we do need a clear, clear immigration law. Somalia definitely deserves a basic law. Listen, when we get a constitution, we can work on getting an immigration law. That's literally what you need. That's why Somalia needs a law. And a law is a constitution. Once we get our constitution, we can have our articles underneath our constitution that basically outlines what kind of rules we need when it comes to immigration, the entry, uh, Somalia, uh, airports, uh, seaports, and, and, and land ports. We can make all that happen. But first, you need a constitution. How did it, uh, Somalia, you know, North Korea, yeah, no, North Korea is also starving. Yeah, why? Because it's a dictatorship. Dictatorship doesn't work for Somalia, whoever supports it. Ah, oh, no, 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 Sahib. Hell no, we are not following the Saudi Mara. Hell no. Hell no. And, and, and the risk of being chopped up in some random Halijiri uh, embassy. I don't like Saudi Arabia's model. That's my point. And as most of you who follow uh, current affairs in the world. I don't believe uh, what the Crown Prince uh, Salman is doing in Saudi Arabia would lead up to a successful um, method in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, if you know the way the monarchy works there, it's by uh, the oldest son, and then it'll, it's like a weird circular, which is an amazing system. It works for, so well for Saudi Arabia. But what this guy is doing, the Prince uh, Salman is, He's destroying all that, and he's pushing himself to the top. So how long will that last? That's on them. Um, the only thing I care about at the moment is the, the uh, Mecca Medina. May Hopefully that nothing happens there. Whatever happens to the rest of Saudi Arabia is none of my damn business. You can take that to the Crown Prince. Uh, I mean, in regards to Saudi Arabia, are the people doing good, you mean? Okay, so folks, uh, no, uh, no, the people are not doing good in Saudi Arabia. Singapore model is the best. No, um, uh, Singapore, I mean, you have to look at the population of Singapore. Uh, I got a friend of mine who, are Sing who is a Singaporean um, and he's Malay and he talks about how the, the ruling class Chinese are discriminating the Malays and the Indians in Singapore. And there's, a, there's the uh, Lee Kuan Yew family, I think. Uh, something or someone. So one of you guys tried to write something down and you got restricted. So probably rephrase it with a little bit more appropriate language. So, so Lee Kuan Yew, the family is in charge. Uh, you've noticed the, the, the guy who made Singapore happen, his son is now in charge. So I don't know how long 
uh, that model can work, but because it's a small, small country, it's definitely when it comes to like, the, like for example, the Vatican concert, you got the Pope. You know, small countries, I don't think anyone, I don't, I don't even look at their um, models. Now, is it an amazing place, Singapore? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's uh, wealthy. I think it's one of, one of the top 10 most expensive places. So yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. Rwanda. So Rwanda, um, again, how long? How long does Rwanda have? I mean, I, I, I personally, um, when it comes to social issues, uh, when it comes to the continent, I definitely support uh, the President Gagame, but how long uh, is Rwanda going to survive with, with Gagame, you know? So I just don't understand this, this mentality that only one man will lead us. It needs to be a system and it needs to be a culture. So how does Europe survive this, this long? How does, you know, why is America like this for 200 years? Because, excuse me, it's the system, folks. It is the system. So, do I believe Somaliland will unite? If you're visiting, welcome. This is the first time ever going live. And I believe you should hit that like button. Stick around. Make sure you're uh, over at Twitter and you're following me. But let's go back to uh, Somaliland. Um, if Somaliland, to be honest with you, Somaliland... In the end goal, I don't, I don't believe Somaliland wants to succeed, uh, uh, succeed because I feel like Somaliland is egging for a major power sharing um, uh, reward because there's so many other people within Somaliland, the, the, the British Somaliland protectorate map that doesn't want to join the, the, the Hargeisa based government. That's my understanding. So what they're trying to do by holding off is to have a stronger negotiating position with Mogadishu and then pushing for either a permanent president, uh, like let's say we want to be, Somaliland wants to be uh, the president and Somalia can be the prime minister or some of the prime ministership can change around, but the presidency can always, it should always be with uh, Somaliland and the, the, so Somaliland is definitely pushing for uh, a position. Now, if Somaliland breaks off with the other uh, people within the protectorate and says, we want to succeed, then yeah, I think Bahadur, they'd definitely leave in a heartbeat if that's what they did. But they don't want that. I don't believe from the conversations I've had with so many uh, Somalilanders. <laughs> so you want Djibouti to rejoin, what, to join Somalia? I just, Sahibyal, let's get one thing straight. Somali and Somalia is two different things. Ugadenia in Balki occupied uh, Ugadenia in Ethiopia. They're Somali. The, the northern region of Kenya, Somali. The, the Djiboutis, Somali. So, had the people in Somalia, Somali. Somalilanders, Somali. Puntland, Somali. Everyone is Somali. I just don't understand this. We, so what if, okay, how about this? I got a good idea for you. How about if Somaliland joins Djibouti? How about if Puntland joins Djibouti? Come on, man. We're having this bogged down conversation about this, this notion of Somalia. Good, good. I feel like um, Shiyad Bari has been a terrible human being. A terrible human being. He caused this in the end of the day. Let's be honest, folks. He caused this issue. I'm so on Sanang. Well, that's what I'm talking about. When I say there's so many people under the protectorate, the British protectorate of Somaliland, who don't submit themselves to Hargeisa government, that's, that, that's the type of conversation that Somaliland should have uh, in Hargeisa. And let's be honest here. Um, the old men in parliament and Hargeisa are really dragging people down. Even with that, the people, the public, Shaq Somaliland, are doing, and that's not, not just Somaliland, but everywhere else in Somalia. The Somali people, the Shaka, are very business oriented and they're the ones holding Somaliland together. They have Shiel, all these big businesses are in Hargeisa and around Somaliland. And the Shaka are making it happen. That's it. 
It is the public's will to make things happen that's making it happen. Because look at the Parliament of Somaliland. 15 plus years. Literally, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. How long have Mahalajiri um, Faisal Ali Warabe been the head of Ut? <laughs> does, that, does that party have any other like smart young leaders? No. How about Wadini? Look at Wadini. This bald, I'm not, trying to be, I'm not trying to insult anyone. No, 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 no. I just need to go find out his name. But the bald guy who's the chairman of Ut, I mean, uh, Wadini. How long has he been in Mahalajiri, uh, the, the, the leader of uh, the party? Is there no other young people who can Mahalajiri lead the party? Meaning, when I say young, I don't mean like 18 and 20. I'm talking about, you know, 35 year olds, 45 year olds. What is these giant, like these, these senior citizens who are constantly in the position of gunning? In Europe, in America, when you hit 65, 70, you just retire, man. Either you become a president or you retire. But in Somalia, it's a prime time to, to loot, to steal. Hold on, let me just say one thing. If I was a 60 year old man in Somalia, Man, that's just the thought process. I'm gonna go to the Gaijas and people who are starving and take money from them in Somalia. And I'm like 65, 70. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna die within a couple of years. And then what I'm gonna do, go to hell? <laughs> Stop. So, Somalia, man, I just don't know. They're hilarious people. They're, I, I love my people. But God, we need to get rid of these people, these old men. We need to have a law saying after 65, mandatory, you're done. I don't care. The only position you can have is um, a judge or, or a president. Psst. You cannot be a member of parliament. You cannot be working for uh, the bureaucracy. You, you're done. Enough is enough. See how little? Uh, no, Siyadbara was a psycho. He, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I don't like to talk ill of the dead. Siyadbara was a sick human being. Um, he was just like Bahalijri, um, the guy in Syria. He, in the end of the day, he only cares. About, he only cared about himself and power. Bis. You know, he, when he talks, he talks like a crazy man. Have you noticed? Ka'an, ka, you are the Ka'an. What, what is the third person Bahalijri conversation you're having with yourself? So. If anyone loves Siyadbare, then you are a problem. Yes, Assad. Like, look at him. If you really care about your country, you love Syria, you love Somalia as a dictator, right? It's fine. Don't you want to get out of the way and leave? Yes, yeah, so he was sick. And I'm like, he's, I'm sorry to say that too. He's a sick human being. He, if he cared about Somalia, he would have been gone. But no, if you're a dictator, you only care about the chair. I want to sit here forever. So, um, there's no love loss, you know? Uh, and that's one thing we need to make sure that uh, the government in Maldisha needs to learn and remember. We don't want dictators. We just don't. And I know I said this video is going to be short because it's my first time going on Hadid Live, but we are hitting our one hour mark. We're close to ending this. But, you know, guys, ask final questions and what you need, what should happen to the channel, uh, and we'll keep you. Yes, he did start the clan wars, he did. You know, he was the one who, who, who buried a, a, a mannequin yeah, or some khashin and called it Qawil Kuwal Dubey. And guess what? Guess who used Qawil immediately? Siyadbari, when it suited him. I don't wanna hear about him. Uh... Thank you. I, I thank you. I, I try my best to do a great job. I try my best to be fair and balanced. Um, but, you know, obviously you can't make everyone happy. Um, again, you guys can see my views on Twitter. Uh, who, you know, any region, anywhere I go, anywhere I talk to, I try to keep it 100 with them, you know, and, and talk about uh, issues relating to that. How will we manage clanism? Okay. We can't. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. This is one thing I hate about people. How can we manage it? We can't manage it. We need to accept that it exists and we need to make sure that people learn the issues of clanism. But what we have in Somalia is people saying, What are you talking about? There is in Somalia. There is tribal issues in Somalia. And we need to do our best to fight it. But if we try to ignore it, 
and we try to act like it doesn't exist, and then that's where the disease continues to flourish, my friends. So, tribalism, you know, the identity of tribe shouldn't be used in a negative fashion. There, and I'm sorry to use names, I'm gonna drop some Qabil names. I'm gonna drop some Qabil names, yeah? If you, if you use tribes for your end means, then that's what well, you're done for. So, let me give you some example. You can be Darot, you can be Hawiyu, you can be Isaq, you can be anything you want. And this is the first time I'm even using that stuff right now, live on Hajjah YouTube. You can use all the Qabils on earth. Be whoever you want to be. But the issue, you can tell, where is the problem? The problem is if you come and say, oh, you're Hawiyu, yeah. You can't have this job. Bah, That's the problem. Oh, you're a sack. You can't have this shakha. Oh, you're that out. No, get get out of here. Get, leave, leave, leave. Oh, you're another tribe. Okay, now let's look at Europe and America. Imagine you're Somali and you go to a job in the US. And someone says, Oh, you're black. Go, get out of here. Get out of here, you're not giving the job. I mean, they do it in a subtle, subtle, quiet, sophisticated way. But imagine that though. Imagine you're a black person in America, Somali, and you want to get a job, you have the degree, you want to be a lawyer, and they say, get out of here. You're not going to be a lawyer, you black ass. Sorry, you're a black person. <laughs> That's exactly the same thing. That is exactly the same thing in Somalia. So just like they're trying their best uh, failing, but we need to fight back. We need to stop. You can, you know, saying we can't talk about Khabil, it's like trying to hide the issue. No, show the issue clearly. You can talk about Khabil. You just can't be a Khabilist. It's a difference. It's a difference. You can talk about racism. That doesn't make you a racist. You can talk about, you know, uh, you know, uh, issues related to, you know, anything, but that doesn't make you a phobe, you know, a phobic. You can talk about Islam, but I mean, Islamophobic. You know, there's a lot of issues. So you can talk about Qabil, you can be a Qabil, but saying, a nigga, if you're happy about your Qabil and you're going around saying, I'm proud to be Mahalinjari Darat, or I'm proud to be a Sahar, okay, good luck. Sahib, you, uh, you got issues that needs to be dealt with. You got major problems that you need to fix. You gotta fix yourself, you gotta fix your face and go away there. That's it. But the question of how I do it is the government. If the government comes in and says, you know what, man? Um, we've, we, let's say some, Somaliland joins Somalia and, and everything is fine, right? And let's say some guy in, you know, somewhere in Hargis, in Mogadishu says, you know what, you're a sack. Mm, you know, you guys were part of that separatist, unionist, separatist movement. You're not gonna get a job. That's a problem, and that's what the Constitution should outline. Tribalism in the, in the form of when it comes to employment, in the form when it comes to anything related to wealth, government, anything, when it comes to anything of the sort, should be forbidden. Period. Period. Now, obviously, so Mahalida, because they're psychotic people, and I, they know <laughs> it's like, I, you, know, it's some, you know, I was, I think I was in Minneapolis and I was talking to someone and then he immediately for some weird reason got what I am. I never told him, never saw this guy. He doesn't know me. He's an old dude, so he never, he doesn't watch my videos. But he, he's like, you're this and that. And then he's like, mm, you did that. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And then another guy, so what I'm saying is Somalis will always know who you are regardless, you know, so if you hear Hargeisa, you're automatically thinking, oof, majority, well, okay, it sucks. If you hear Lusha, you're thinking, mm, you're thinking about okay, how you. If you hear about okay, Gurowe and Bulan, you MJs, you know, that's same thing. But it should be illegal if anyone from any of these regions apply for a job and if anyone asks their tribe, but because they don't have to ask their tribe because it's implicit, then what they do is there should be another set of rules, a quota. 
period. One, you need to have your qualifications in education, and two, to make sure that everything and everyone is taken care of fairly. I know it's very hard and it's tough and you know we have to climb, but it's just how it needs to be for a better Somalia. We got it. So that's what we need to focus on. That's what we need to work on. Do I think Somalia and Somaliland could come together as one country? Make sure you're hitting the like button, folks. Good job, damn, you guys are fast. Um, I believe they can come together. They can come together because they have come together. They've done it before. And guess what, folks? Let me be blunt honest with you now. Somaliland before joined Somalia, and guess what? Essex and Hawiya and Darod and all these things, all this Khabir al it existed before 1960s. And what? We fought hard to get rid of the European occupiers. And now I'm here occupying their land. <laughs> but we've... <laughs> Oh God, it's, you know, mental, mental hazard entertainment. We fought hard to get rid of the European occupiers. We did. And guess what? Saks, Darod, Hawiyu, Kuli, we all came together. Now, do I believe we can come together again and work together without tribal needs? I believe so. I know so. But I know I'm not occupying. I'm just visiting <laughs> and I'll leave. Um, something they forgot to do. Um, but I believe we can come together as different people we are. But do I support Somaliland joining Somalia today without a constitution? That's a hell no. Somaliland shouldn't even have a conversation with Somalia until Somalia has a clear Mahalia constitution that Somalia can look at and say, hmm, this, we can get up, we, we can join this country. We can, we can join these people. Why would I, if I was from, from Somaliland, join Somalia today. Just give me one reason why I, go ahead, you guys comment. Tell me one reason why I should join Somaliland, Somalia today. And I'm from Somaliland, for example. I'm not, but let's say I'm from Somaliland. Why should I join Somalia? Come on. Nationalism? Nationalism, what the hell does nationalism mean? No, no, no. give me something great, Saib. Give me something great. I don't wanna hear this nationalistic nonsense. Give me something. Okay, I like that. Together is better. Yes. Okay. Good job. It's <laughs> good job. You came back. That's nice. Yes. So together is better. But, but that's still not it, is it? Yes. Benefits. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like it. Now we're talking revenue. We're talking like staying um, in. Okay. Well, look, the whole thing is gone. Whoever believes, uh, some guy said, Mahalijiri, someone said, I don't know if you're a girl or a guy, I apologize. Someone said, oh, if one piece leaves, what makes you think the whole pie, or the whole thing will break apart? Um, great, great, I love it. But guess what? What makes you think Somalia right now is united? Let's just be honest right now. Who believes right now Somalia is united? I want to go ahead. I want to see comments. Do you guys believe Somalia right now is united? If you do, let me know. Who believes right now Somalia is united? Thank you. No, not at all. Because if they were, then that means Puntland would listen to Mogadishu, Hargeisha would listen to Mogadishu, Jubilee would listen to Mogadishu. Everyone would listen to the Hajri, uh, uh, the Mogadishu government, right? Exactly. Somalia is not united right now. So I don't want to hear the notion of oh, Somalia united. We're not there. So the idea that we're going to claim and clench onto. Uh, so... Now, too many foreigners are there mainly because of our own undoing. Foreigners don't. Listen, f let me give you a, a, a something, Halijiri, humanity first. Foreigners don't care about Somalia. If Somalia succeed, they don't care. If Somalia fails, they don't care. Foreigners don't care about Somalia. I don't know why we have this notion that foreigners cares about Somalia. Somalia, could, they, don't, they could care less. On the contrary, they love the status quo. They love the status quo. They love this Qaliya Bukhandamanin. We gotta take. So Somalia is not united right now. We don't have a united Somalia. But we get back to the point of why Somalia. I believe, that's my belief. You guys have your belief. I believe Somaliland at this junction shouldn't negotiate or speak to 
Somalia. And Somaliland should also make it a precondition, even though I hate preconditions, but should make it a precondition that until Somalia could have a completed constitution, a completed constitution, that they can see how they would treat the people who chose to be united with Somalia. We're not having a conversation. That's my point. Look at it. That's my point. If you're watching me right now, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. We need to hit, we need to go over the uh, 4,000, no, the 5K mark. The 5K mark. Once we hit that 5K mark, folks, we are making it. We got it. Musid be he. Uh, who believes the ICJ or the International Criminal Court cares about Somalia, Somalia, Somalia? Who, who believes it? I don't believe ICJ cares about us. They don't care about anybody. Folks, I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. I just don't. So, let me get back to the Somaliland. Do uh, I, I believe they're going to join? Let me just finish that up. Somaliland will be an important contribution to the whole of Somalia. Yeah, granted. We know that. And I would love to see my Somalilanders helping out with uh, investment, infrastructure projects, um, amazing landscape in Somaliland that for tourism, you know, the, and continuing the, the, the title that we have the longest coastline in the African continent. Yes. I don't like seeing us break apart. No, no. Somaliland itself has an internal issue when it comes to sub-tribal issues. The issue with Somalia and Somaliland was Siabare. Right? Who disagrees? Everyone in Hargeisa, everyone in uh, everyone in Somaliland. The issue between us is the dictator Siad Bare and what he, he has done to Hargeisa. No one, I will never discount that. But guess what? Siad Bare is dead. I'm not, you know what? So I'll say Ilaha Naharist. But let Ilahi deal with him. The guy is dead. The guy is dust in the ground somewhere in Nigeria. He's dead. So why are we dealing with this? Why? Because we need to accept as the rest of Somalia the atrocities committed by the dictatorship of Siyadbare. And I will make it clear, I'm not even joking, breaking news right here, right now. Siyadbare is dead and long gone. And Somalia should atone for what they've done to Argeisu. Yes, there should be monuments, memorials, and payments to the people of Somalia. We, injustice cannot be accepted and cannot be brushed under the rug. Oh my God. But we need also to have laws on the book so we no longer have a Siad Bara style issues anywhere. That's how simple it is. Man, we're just dragging ourselves. Now, you ask why do I hate the current government? Look what they're doing in Hajjid Bay Double. Now, if I was someone from Somaliland, and I'm seeing what's happening in Southwest State, and if I'm seeing what's happening in Bay Double, oh my God, forget about apologizing to me. You're doing it again. So, excuse me, Sahib, but no, Somaliland at this junction should not join Somalia. Is that, is that wrong of me? So... I hear you. They should, you know, every region has been harmed. Look, I, I understand. My ancestors were one of the people who were harmed as well. Look, it's, there's a difference. There's a difference between, and, and, and no life is better than, no, no, no. No life is better than the other. I hate when people have this, no life. But we need to accept that brute force 
and by 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 the government of Selbare in Hargeisha. Right. And if which I know there is, then they're not saying anything. They're not. There's obviously there was documentation of poisoning, Hajri systematic, uh, uh, Malki uh, extermination, yeah, of other regions where we had. But that, as a government, we need to accept that the dictatorship did this, and we need to let the people of Somalia know: look, we have your back, we got you. But we also have to look within Somalia and say, okay. What are we doing to the minority clans in Somalia? What are we doing to the Langab, that disgusting phrase, to Somalia? So they, there should also be a reprimand. There should also be free education for, yes, the Bantus. There should be free education. Mahalajiri fast track when it comes to promotions, fast track when it comes to jobs. There should be accountability. We need to start working at that. But if we're focused on, like I said, small-minded issue that, oh, well, I'm not taking care of, and if my Kabila is not taking care of, then I'm not joining it. Then what Somali are you talking about? Why are we wasting our time? I hate people who push the notion of nationalism, and when you tell them to fast-track to getting there, they're like, mm, no, 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 Kabila can't get Okay, then you never cared about nationalism. You never cared. We got to say, so we need to end this book in Kailo. Make sure you're liking the Hajri, this page if you're joining us. I appreciate you being here. But we need to work together. That's the only way we can save whatever remnants of a country we have. But if we cannot even accept that, if we cannot give the dues to the people of Somaliland, if we cannot give to the people who have been abused, the Langabs they call them, which is disgusting. I call them Somalis. By the way, if you disagree, let me know. We need to do more. So we need to work together. Yes, we need to. Um, okay, so let's talk about foreign halogenic policy before I leave. Hmm, you guys might not like this. Most of you might, but effective immediately, the completed constitution should also make it clear that Somalia will no longer be part of the Arab League and the African Union. Somalia should also reduce its footprint around the world, only work with those countries we see fit when it comes to economic and social growth. That's it. We have no time for joining all these nonsensical Mahalajra organizations. Enough is enough. Um, we know the United Nations, even though I don't like them, we should stay with the United Nations because we need to be somewhat relevant in the international stage. We, if we cannot use them as to our benefits, make sure you like this uh, video. If we cannot use them to our benefits, there's no reason why we should stick around. The Arab League to me completely is useless. Um, even if you believe you're Somali and you're Arab, Zahib, the Arab League is useless. Uh, effective immediately, we can have bilateral trade and bilateral cooperation with Arab states, obviously. And we will always be uh, friends with our Muslim Arab brothers and sisters in the Arab world. But we should not be part of the Arab League. Effective immediately, a new government that comes in should look deeply into reducing our footprint with this conglomerate of useless organizations and immediately withdraw from nonsensical rules of engagement when it comes to um, uh, UN charters and stuff. It has nothing to do with us. It doesn't benefit us. Um, now come to uh, free trade zones pushed by the East African countries like Ethiopia. Somalia should immediately withdraw from the African Union and only have bilateral deals with Ethiopia, Kenya, and the countries that we see fit. We don't need to join free trade unions or open border policies. No, Sahib. In that regards, we need to be more like Switzerland or Iceland. We do not need to join all these nonsensical organizations. Somalia needs to look after itself. And I'm not saying Somalia first, like here in the United States, with President Donald Trump in his racist point of view. But Somalia should be prioritized by Somalis. At the moment, we are under heavy debt and we're using uh, loans from different countries and organization. And to do what? To have embassies everywhere, join nonsense Mahalajri uh, parties and groups and pay Mahalajri some Oday that came out of nowhere, require 
what am I getting? Oh, okay. Um, embassy and Tajikistan guys. Or oh, you know what? How about you? Somalia's embassy in Malaki. Um, in Somalia's embassy in North Korea. That's that has nothing to do with us. If we're not having a trade and if we're not having cultural exchange, we're not doing anything with them. Sorry. Assalamu alaikum. Why do I, why does Somalia need to be in Argentina or Chile? Are we having trade with them? Are they sending us bio um, technology when it comes to medicine and all that stuff? No. Okay, then sahib. Um, uh, see you later. There's no reason why Somalia should be part of any of that. Uh, true, don't. Exactly. Halijiri, in the end of the day, if you look at the Europeans, if you look at Canada, if you look at America and every other country, China, they don't randomly join things because they want to be part of conglomerate. No, they join because it's in their interest. And if Africa and Somalia can wake up to that, then we will succeed. That's my, it's, 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 it's basic. Well, what basic? That's it. Follow your own interests when it comes to your people in your country. Now, when it comes to I will, I do appreciate, I will, I mean, I will definitely continue the FaceTime, uh, not FaceTime, Lifetime, <laughs> live video chats. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe. Uh, no, no, it's, so someone is asking about LGBT in Somalia. Now, it's, uh, you know, one, you have to look at the country. You have to look at the people and their rules and the laws and the countries govern. And Somalia should work around that framework. That's, I know it's very diplomatic what I just did, but that's where I have to keep it at. Um, look at Somalia, see does it fit. And then this is a democracy and we should work around that democracy. Or it should be a democracy. And the majority of the people, if they accept it, that's on them. That's their referendum. The United States passed uh, how did these laws and rules under Obama. And that was, what, a couple of years ago? In America, it's about 250, 280 years. So Somalia should have its own rules and vote its own path. So let's not move around. I did not move to Birmingham. I'm just visiting. I will go back to my beautiful country, uh, my beautiful home country in America. Um, you know, the thing is, I think the northern part of England, uh, Manchester, you know, Liverpool, I'm from Liverpool, that's where I'm like, uh, you know, I'd rather go move away from that and go straight to Scotland and I'd rather deal with the Scottish accent. I hate that. If you look at England, where Scotland meets Mahajan England, that mixture, that English part of England is, whew, man, I don't want to deal with that because it's, I mean, they're great people. Don't, don't get me wrong, but their accent is just weird. So I just rather jump straight to Scotland and get a uh, democracy made in India weak. No, no, I disagree. Democracy did not make India weak. Um, I disagree with that full heartedly. Democracy did not, um, democracy did not ruin India. India ruined itself. Uh, and it's chaotic mess. And listen, it's it, uh, India is a mess, Sahib. I, I, I understand the, 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 the love for the expedient uh, job task when it comes to China, because everything that China wants, China wants bullet trains, China wants development, China wants anything, boom, it happens. I hear you, there's, there's, there's a love for that. But, but that means, look at Malachi, America. America is stronger than China. We have more ships, we have more weapons, and we do it better. So does that mean we're, so does that mean China's method now sucks? No, it means how the people and the government work together. Next topic, okay. If the economy of China is number two. I hear you, but China will be, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to sound like Donald Trump, but I'm an American at the end of the day, and I'm, and I'm giving you facts here. We are 10 times stronger than China, and, and I have nothing against them from uh, against uh, the Chinese people, you know, they're fine people, but 
uh, when it comes to the economy, I hear you, I hear you. When it, the economy, they're number two. But if you look at it, if you look at it, GDP per capita, they're far away from Americans. You're gonna have all the European countries coming in, and then it's gonna be, you know, China's gonna be with India and Haji, the Middle Eastern countries when it comes to uh, GDP per capita. GDP le, when it comes to the country, yes, China's number two, but number two, not even close. Number two, like, Way the hell away from us. In regards to, they don't, China has a, yes, China has a very low GDP per capita. They do. Uh, I'm confused with the com conversation you guys are having. Uh, G uh, China is what? Guys, make sure to like this video and, and to ask questions and inshallah, I'll definitely do my best. I've, I've, I've covered that topic, what the roles, the, but I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown. The diaspora, their role is to advise. Their role is to support. Their role is to help. Their role is not to usurp the power from the local people in Somalia. If you have an idea, if you have a plan, you should do just that. Furthermore, furthermore, there should be a law. There should be a law, and guess what? This is gonna hurt me too. I'm the guy, I'm the American here. This is gonna hurt me. There should be a law that bans foreign nationals holding this passport and any other passport in Somalia from high office. You can't be a senator, you can't be a member of parliament, and you can't be the president and the prime minister of a country when you hold another passport, period. So there should be that, but guess what? Because Somalia doesn't have a constitution, it's a la, it's a la la land. Anyone can do whatever they want. So, I think I hope I've answered most of everyone's questions. I think um, it was a great experience. Uh, I definitely appreciate everyone here. I really do. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, not to sound like uh, a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> but did Farmaja ever talk about him giving up his passport? No. Did Farmaja come out, um, the foreign minister of Somalia, come out and talk about it? No. It was a tweet from Halijiri, one of the, the government accounts, saying he no longer has a passport. I've never seen Farmaja, and if, he's, if he, okay, look, Farmaja, he's done one thing after. He's done one great thing. He has made the media, uh, when it comes to Malki uh, promotions, he's done a great job. Farmaja, I think, is better than any Somali president when it comes to propaganda and social media. The guy and his government is everywhere. Kaide, all of them, they're great. Let me, first of all, let me give a due to their government. They, they know how to use social media better than me. So when it comes to that, they know what to do. But... Tell me one time the president of the camera, the Wusab administration, came out and said, as the president of Somalia, I've no longer, I'm, not, I'm no longer a Balki, an American. Tell me one time. I want to see one video. That's it. Uh, he did not help our people bring back from foreign prison. I'm not trying to uh, denigrate. I love the back and forth conversation. I really do love it. He did not bring back Somalis. It was the UN, uh, uh, UN agencies that brought back. Uh, I know Somali. Uh, I know this government likes to take credit for everything. Everything. Look at They do. They love taking credit for everything. And whenever something is wrong with Somalia, they like to toss it back. They're like, oh, we have nothing to do with that. And it So it's either Formaja is taking credit for everything or he's taking credit for certain things. Let me give you a friend that I follow here on Twitter. He was talking about the election. Uh, he said, when for my, so he's, he's, he's quoting this guy. He says, the guy, this is the guy I disagree with. Um, uh, Sharki, whatever, he's, he's, he's in Twitter. He said, Somalia will never surrender Jubaland to Kenya and let her annex it through installing her puppet, Mo, uh, Mudowe, as president so long as it breathes. Okay, that's his view. Okay, and then the other guy with I support. <laughs> said when you and some talks about when you and some talks about uh, when you and some talks to Formaja about election, it's called interference. 
How about when they talk about debt relief in, the, uh, in Twitter, that's a victory for nobody alone. So folks, you can see that that's the issue with the Somali government. Whenever it comes to, whenever it comes to how did it progress and achievements and whatever, when they agree with it, it's a great thing. Well, what I, you know, we've done, we've done an amazing thing. But whenever there's a negative comment, it's not, not a company, it's not us. We have nothing to do with this. We don't care about these people. And that's, at the end of the day, the issue with this government. I just can't. I, I definitely appreciate my friend all the way from Toronto. I love Toronto. I visited Toronto. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, you guys, you have to update me on the, uh, why the, the black chief was, is quitting or whatever. But overall, Toronto is an amazing place. Um, and Drake is okay. So let's go back to our conversation. For my jet, did not release his passport. Uh, what yeah, I will never release my Qabil information. Go ask all the Asher because apparently they know my Qabil. I am doing my, oh, I am definitely doing my best to stay safe, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, at the end of the day, guys, for my jet, didn't, never said he released his citizenship. His goons out there said that they have, he has re released his citizenship. So for my jet, he could have had to use that as a campaign. We'll see, but he's gonna lose this February. Come February, for my jet is gone. And guess where he's gonna go back? He's gonna go back to his nice little town in America called Buffalo, New York. And he's still gonna be American because he never released his citizenship. We need Sharia a law in Somalia. Um, some that some form of uh, Sharia law will be in the yeah. In the, it would would just like you know uh, uh, these these people's you know the Christians adopted some part of their religion in in the constitution. I mean there sh there would be some form of Sharia, but not complete Sharia law in Somalia. Uh, in that regards, I'm I'm confused. No, he did not release his citizenship. I'm not trying to have a debate um, back and forth. I'm just telling you, go check it out. You go show me. I'm on Twitter, so just send me, you know, uh, uh, tweet me the, the fact that you have about Fermaja releasing his Twitter. You can how did he at me to it. You can do whatever you want. I'm on Twitter. You can send it to me, and I will see what you're talking about. And I guarantee you, on the next live video, I will recuse, or I will definitely uh, correct myself. The Arab League didn't... Uh, Yes, they didn't, because Arab League is completely useless. Well, you got to go back and watch the whole video, Sahib. I've been doing this for a while now. I've talked about Somaliland a lot, and people know um, my views on Somaliland. Again, great people, great place. Um, again, go watch the video. Once we're done with the live, you can watch the whole thing again. Folks, make sure you're liking it. Let's hit, let's hit the like button, folks. Come on, let's get it done. Uh, so I can leave. <laughs> okay. Um, look, look. Uh, again, Somalia is a Muslim country, so some form of Baki Sharia will be uh, uh, um, somewhat adopted. But Somalia will also adhere to the rules of civilized Baki when it comes to uh, civilized laws. Um, and when, what does that mean? It doesn't mean Sharia is not civilized. Sharia should be implemented, obviously. But in the form that uh, here in the United States, for example, there are people who are, you know, the Jewish community in New York, they want to follow uh, the Torah to a certain extent, and they want to have that. So I feel like the, uh, in Somalia, obviously there's civil laws, civil courts, and then there's also Sharia courts. So if people, because obviously when Somalis get married, and Muslims get married, they marry by the religion, just like here in America, but they also have to go to the city hall to get their license of marriage. Okay, I feel like we can all work together on that. Um, I've, I spoke about uh, LGBT. You have to watch when I'm done, inshallah, when I'm done with this video. Um, overall, the understanding in Somalia is um, we need to respect people and we need to, uh, yes, I agree, so I can be implemented. 
And the thing is, that's the problem with Somalis. They take everything to the extreme. We gotta know that's that's what that's what that's the issue. We 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 don't need that. You know, we 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 need to live in a society where um, you can have a form of Sharia law, but you also need a form of uh, civil law. But you know, we're not we don't we don't need some guy chopping up people in the city center. This is I understand. We can have laws, common sense. Obviously, if there's rape, if there's crimes, but look at Somalia today. The same people, you know, I, I was watching a video about um, uh, a Somali politician. Uh, he was talking about how, you know, he was quoting uh, Sharia. And, and, and at the same time, this guy is saying, we should let Muhammad Umar, who raped a six-year-old, walk free. So I'm not painting one side with a, 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 a one, uh, one stroke. And the same thing shouldn't be done with Sharia, but we can, as, as people, we can find a, 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 a middle ground to work together. Is that hard? It, um, the video it was on this, about the LGBT, it was on this one. Um, so, like I said, Somalia is a predominant Muslim country. Um, America and the rest of the Western countries is what? America, 280 years. In the past, what, five, seven years, they accepted the LGBT rights. Let's be honest. It, is, it, it depends on the society. If Somalia, all of Somalia accepts the LGBT and that's what they want, and then guess what? That's what they're going to get. But if they say no, then that's the law, that's the rule, that's the will of the people, so it's a no. Um, now, do should people live free within a society? Yeah, I feel like people should live within free, free within a society, um, and I, I don't believe anyone should be killed for you know, their actions, but there should be some common understanding that, look where you are, look what the country you're in. It's like, if I go to um, uh, Iran, you think they're gonna accept LGBT? So it's just, you have to understand where you are. You have to understand, obviously you shouldn't ex uh, accept people being killed, people being murdered, abused for who they are. That's their life and that's their lifestyle. So for me, I don't, you're like, what I'm saying is look at the society, look at the culture, look at the religion and see, does that fit? And I try to be highly diplomatic before, but I'm trying to be highly more polite here. Somalis, you do the math. Somalis and LGBT. Go ahead. You do the math. But okay. So let's get back to um, uh, the overall understanding. Guys, I appreciate I appreciate. <laughs> I. <laughs> so you think Halidir Pula is gonna declare independence? Um, it's gonna be for another live stream. I think I've, I think I've, hold you guys a bit too long. Uh, I definitely, definitely do appreciate the support. You guys are very, very cool. You guys are very, very amazing. Uh, make sure to thank you from Ethiopia. Thank you. I hope Abi Ahmed is not abusing you guys. The guy is a mess. I don't know why and how he got the um, Nobel Peace Prize. But apparently they give that to everyone now. No worries. Inshallah, I'll be coming live soon. Um, just make sure to turn on your uh, notification. I'll be posting another video either within this week about uh, Black Lives Matters and racism everywhere, including Somalia. Okay? Um, but okay. Guys, I'm going to salute you guys out. Assalamu alaikum. If I can get out. <laughs> and let's see. See you later, guys.